So I've plugged in the PreSonus audio box I1 and I'm just going to do a demo of just making sure that it's working before you launch Pro Tools. So uh, it just connects by a USB cable uh, and that provides power. And then once we've powered the device and connected it with a USB cable, then we should actually see the device. So here I am on, this is on Mac OS obviously. But if you just go up to the Apple icon and choose System Preferences, and then you look at your sound control panel, then you will see that the PreSonus now appears in the input and output section of your sound control panel. Okay, uh, well I'm actually screen recording at the moment, so the output is going to something called Telestream. But you'll see here, when you flick between input and output, you'll see PreSonus Audio Box I1. Uh, you just need to have that set to in and out, just so that you can use this. You might want to use this for your Zoom conferencing, for example, in which case you would have PreSonus Audio Box I1 selected in your Zoom audio preferences for the input and output. But we're looking at Pro Tools at the moment, so uh, let's have a look at how we check that out in Pro Tools. So I'm just going to launch Pro Tools now, and then we will see uh, how to set the audio box i1 up as your audio interface in Pro Tools. Okay, it brings up, I'm just going to create a um, test session at the moment. Uh, location, I'm just gonna put it on my desktop for now. Uh, and it'll be set to 24-bit uh, and it's set to 48 kilohertz uh, by default uh, but that's what we want interleaved file format and you can see there the location on my desktop so I'm just going to create a new session uh, nothing to see here because I haven't created any tracks but what I'm interested in is in the setup menu I want to go to playback engine and in the playback engine uh, I want to actually have this now set to PreSonus Audio Box I1. Uh, that is going to set the PreSonus as my audio interface to use for Pro Tools. Uh, whenever you change the playback engine in Pro Tools, it does require you to uh, relaunch the application. Okay, so I'm just clicking through those dialogues now and it'll uh, wait for a moment and then I'll go back to set up playback engine and just check it did what it was supposed to do and it did. So it's changed the playback engine to PreSonus Audio Box i1. Okay, uh, I'm going to leave the hardware buffer size set to 256 samples. Um, you'll find that uh, the lower the hardware buffer size is set, the less latency or delay you get through the system when you're monitoring at it. Um, this is a subject which I'll go into in some detail later. Uh, I'm just going to leave it to uh, 256 samples for now. I'm just going to take off the ignore errors uh, and I will enable dynamic plug-in processing which allows you to release the computer's CPU uh, on audio tracks where there's nothing happening. So it just helps a little bit. Let me just hit OK and then I'm going to go to track new and just create a new audio track. It's a mono audio track and I'm just calling it PreSonus test. And then uh, what I need to do is uh, look at my inputs and outputs. And you'll see that the PreSonus only has uh, two inputs. And uh, so I'm plugged into input one with my mic at the moment. So when I select this and I go into record enable, uh, there I am, I should see myself. So there I am. So let me now just record a test of my voice speaking. So this is a test of the PreSonus. Um, just have my mic plugged into the mic input and I set the level and obviously I've set input one to where my mic is and obviously I have set input one as my mic input so I'm seeing myself recording it there so let's just stop it here. All right, I'm going to take it out of Record Enable for a moment uh, and then I'm just going to play back my test to see what happened. So this is a test of the PreSonus. Um, just have my mic plugged into the mic input 
and I set the level and obviously I've set input one to where my mic is and obviously I have set input one as my mic input so I'm seeing myself recording it there so let's just stop it here so there we go uh, that's as simple as that so when you receive your interface those of you that don't have them uh, it's literally as quick as that. You plug the interface in, check that the interface is being seen in your sound control panel in the Mac, open up Pro Tools, set the playback engine to PreSonus Audio Box i1, and then just do a little test like I did there, and you should be hearing something. You might need to just have a bit of a look at the audio box controls uh, you will see that there obviously is a mic level control on there and also you will see that there is a headphone level control and something called direct which allows you to hear a loop through of your mic uh, without it going through Pro Tools. Uh, we will talk about that a little bit more later and also when you're speaking you will actually see once you've set your mic level correctly you will see like this the the light bubbling away, the green light. Obviously, if you've set your level correctly, it's not going to be going red and clipping. It's not a hugely informative meter on the PreSonus, but at least it's enough to see that your audio is in the ballpark uh, and you can tweak your level a lot better uh, when you're looking at your software metering in Pro Tools.